Hello, I think I'm alive. Okay. Can, can you see me? I can see you. Yes. <laughs> okay. We're, I'm, today is another episode on Hydro Flask. I'm Dan Gadowskis, and it's a fun little series that we're doing in this um, interesting and unique time here. Um, up with some of the Hydro Flask ambassadors. Last week, we got the chance to hang out with one of my good friends, Cliff Capono, who's a Hawaiian surfer and also a chemist, scientist. Um, he had some really, really cool, impactful um, ways of looking at life, you know, through an environmental landscape and a microscope, literally. So that was cool. But today, we're going to interview Anna Ergot, who is my girlfriend, happens to be, and she is an absolute rock star um i'm so happy to have her on the uh the show here on in between adventures and she's a new hydro flask ambassador and we're gonna check in with her but just a little backstory she owns her own uh board bag company called sagebrush which focuses on handmade board bags and it's very sustainable and really cool she loves traveling all around the world um one of my favorite things when I first met her was just listening to the stories, you know, traveling to crazy locations, whether it's, you know, Russia or Iceland and um, the Galapagos from really cold extremes to really warm and beautiful. And she always had a camera and writing stuff down. So it was cool. So I'm going to check in with her. I'm going to see. We live together. So she's somewhere around the house or I'm not sure where, but um we don't have the echo on the phone, so let's see if she's here in the request. Oh, there she is. Let's check. Hey. Anna. How's it going? Good. How are you doing today? What are you, where, where, where are you right now? About three rooms over from you. <laughs> We're here in San Clemente. And just enjoying a nice warm day that kind of feels like summer now you're always hiding somewhere in the house or <laughs> tucked around some corner no that's that's your little magic zone right there um i just did a little introduction i was talking about you a sage rush and kind of what you do and i know i've had the firsthand ability to see you in action building board bags and then this time building face masks and how much you dedicate to it and it's really special to see and how did you get going doing that? I mean, what's the backstory with Sage Rush? Okay, I've had a brand called Sage Rush Brags for about six years now. And originally, I just wanted it to make a surfboard bag for myself. And I had basic sewing skills. So I just kind of traced the outline of one of my surfboards and sewed some fabric together and made a board bag. And then through that, just kind of got really into sewing and making other projects and kind of using sewing and creativity as a way to be more sustainable by buying remnants or dead stock fabric and eco-friendly materials and just seeing what else I could make or what else I could kind of not buy I guess in a lot of ways reusing old fabric and things like that to create whatever I need and in this time it, that was face masks so I made a couple for friends and family and then kind of realized that there's a bit of demand for them as they're being required in a lot of stores right now so just started I don't know like t turning my whole business model into making face masks instead of word bags that's insane yeah how did you come up with like because i know for the nose you you use recycled coffee bags right uh -huh. of the surfboards how did that kind of aesthetic come together it's and and with all the fabrics i know you pick up fabrics from your travels do you have a, a fabric or a board bag sequence that you made that sticks out to you as like maybe one of your favorite ones you know I love ones where I've picked up fabric abroad. So sometimes I'll go thrifting if I have a day off on a trip and buy some vintage fabric or something like that. I recently went on a trip to Iceland. I'll show you the word bag. I found this old fabric um, from a thrift store there. It's this cool yellow and there's all this like embroidery on it. I love the, the simple ones, but I really just love having little pieces of the culture and the places I've traveled through. I guess just, I love fabric and Fabric is such a cool way to understand culture is what I'm trying to say. So I love the travel series ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always so excited when you, when I see you come back from a trip and then you have like, I mean, that Iceland one is, is one of my favorites too. 
Aww. But yeah, so I don't know if there's specifically a favorite, but I like most of the fabric I buy is from remnant, um, remnant warehouses, remnant fabric warehouses here in LA. But when I'm able to travel and find remnant stuff, that's always fun too. That's cool. Well, um, what was I thinking? I mean, you've traveled pretty much all around the world. Uh, I know it's just tied into your board bag company. Kind of, how how did you get into, you grew up, growing up in Topanga Canyon, falling in love with the ocean, you know, how was it all coming together to a place where you ended up pursuing a life of travel and culture and surfing and, and then creating a business that was really a part of that kind of lifestyle? Gosh, I don't know if there was one step, but it's just kind of all my dreams coming true of just one step at a time of really fighting for what I wanted. And that didn't come easy. There was definitely like a lot of random trade jobs before I was able to travel like this, where I would just work for a few months, maybe six months or so, and then plan a trip, go somewhere for a couple of months, come back, work more, and really just got used to that lifestyle of traveling and just fell in love with it. It's such a cool way to see the world through surfing. So through that, just kind of ended up taking a ton of travel photos, starting a blog, and then inevitably surfing enough to pick up sponsors and do that full time now, which is so much fun. Being, yeah. being a professional surfer and owning a brand, it's like, two of my dreams come together. Who do you work with the, from the brand's uh, perspective? And I know, I mean, we're, wel we're officially welcoming you to the Hydro Flask uh, ambassador program here um, <laughs> with this conversation, but I know you have quite a few brands that you work with personally for a long time, so. Okay, yeah. Right I work with the clothing brand Prana. They make sustainable, organic, and recycled material clothing. And then I work with Axe Wetsuits. It's a Japanese wax, wax, uh, Japanese wetsuit brand. And um, Bing Surfboards, they're a surfboard shaping company in San Diego. And then now Hydro Flask, which is so exciting. <laughs> it's pretty rad. What, what about Hydro Flask were you kind of excited or inspired about? You know, I mean, you've had the chance to kind of get to know everyone in the company. And uh, yeah. they're just real sweet people. And they're really authentic. And it's such a it's an authentic brand. And uh, I mean, what's it mean to you to be a part of the family now? It's so exciting. Like you said, the people that we've met, there are such wonderful people. So that's a huge thing for me, just being able to work with people that I'm inspired by and love to be around. And then of course, the product as well. I think there's two things that never go out of style and they're drinking water and one step at a time to be more and more sustainable. And Hydroclass really embodies those two things of cutting out single use plastic, and just having a more sustainable life and drinking lots of water. <laughs> I've got mine right here. <laughs> it's so funny. I was laughing because, I mean, you've seen me with this thing. I, it's everything comes in, goes in here and just like, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a one-stop shop and I don't know. It's really cool. Um, so show us some of your board bags. I'm, I'm excited for people to see your office space. It's so rad in there. I okay. see them all tucked in the corner too. I'll leave the phone here and I'll go bring one out so I can show them to the camera here. Okay. So this is a little creative space. I'll just do a little tour first. I have a couple sewing machines, some plants, instruments, couch, and then fabric. And then here is my big wall of board bags and Wi-Fi. <laughs> so I'll take one out here. Let's see. So I make these here, now at, in San Clemente, I just moved recently, but it's a bag for a surfboard. So it just kind of protects them for day use and stuff like that. And each one's a little bit different with different fabric. And this is the coffee bean sack that coffee beans are imported to the US in from wherever they come from. This one is from Man Lao River in China. Sometimes they're from places like Ethiopia or Nicaragua. And, it's so always cool to check out where the coffee bean sacks come from. So as you get connected to so many coffee bags, how is your love for coffee growing? Or where are you at? Are you a coffee person or a tea person? <laughs> I love the taste of coffee. Can't handle the caffeine. I don't know what it is. I've never been able to do caffeine. So as much as I have a brand that revolves around coffee in some ways and thinking coffee is cool and I think it relates to surf in so many ways because surfers are usually morning people and usually you want a cup of coffee to fire up but 
me personally don't do caffeine i like tea <laughs> that's cool do you have do you have a little special flavor that's your go-to or um i mean like i said decaffeinated ones so chamomile we've been getting into this chocolate tea recently i like any of the nice herbal ones nice now i'll know uh, your favorites <laughs> <laughs> what's good at the story so okay thinking back on sage fresh is it really loud there's a helicopter above me i is it loud? i can't hear through the phone okay so i think you're good, That's good. <laughs> but so sage fresh growing as a small brand you as the owner you're you're building you're creating these things um it's really cool to see you you invest all your passion and time into it do you have any tips for people out there who maybe have an idea or a passion for design or starting a small business on their own do you what kind of advice would you give them and, and do you have any tips for someone looking to start a small business out of a, a passion project yeah i always wanted to start a business before i started this board bag brand and just never had like the guts to start so many of them and i think the most terrifying part is just that first step and I don't think you have to have all the answers in the beginning. You don't have to have a full business plan. You don't have to have a website. It's just kind of making those first things that you want to make, give them to a couple friends and family. Just, just make that first step and everything starts to seem so much easier after that. And you know, you can fine tune things as you go, but just try that first step. And if it doesn't work, there's always more business plans where you can tweak things or maybe it's like, that's going to kind of teach you so much that you'll be able to take to a different business idea or something. But just to try, you know? Just go for it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's been really inspiring for me to see you working in the office. And I don't know, just, it's really small businesses and but the personal touch and passion is just, it's a really special thing. So <laughs> I appreciate what you bring to the community. And yeah, it's just, it's rad. So. A lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so we're here for the Hydro Flask. We've been talking about refill for good. You know, how you can use these, but how have you been using some some of your new Hydro Flask gear to kind of, um, you know, spread, spread that kind of good energy or kind of utilize it. Like Cliff Capona last week had some really amazing thoughts that, you know, using a reusable cup or like a Hydro Flask container is more about encompassing a philosophy of sustainability and those kind of things. Um, what are your thoughts about that? I love that. Kind of something along the same lines, I guess. I think if we strive for perfection with sustainability, it's really daunting. But if you just kind of make a habit of a couple things, if you just get in the habit of refilling your water, bo water bottle every morning before you leave the house or just emit plastic straws or something like that, you know, that becomes habitual. Or if your, your coffee um, barista starts to remember that you're the person that doesn't want to litter in their coffee, then it's like not an ordeal every time. I think it's, you just choose a couple of things and do them over time and then it starts to feel natural until you don't even have to think about it anymore. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really become a cool way of life, you know, ever since yeah. being a part of the Hydro Flask community and just getting more engaged with their products and just seeing how incredibly useful they are for such a diversity of whatever i mean cliff had his cell phone in the cup as a speaker you know i keep mine on the <laughs> desk with pens in it or i mean shoot sometimes i'll put a flower in it you know pull it from the garden and have flowers out of there or, or soil and you could grow a vegetable plant I mean, totally. <laughs> what's probably the weirdest way you think you could incorporate that wow you know the I most know off, off the wall thing that you could think of I mean, obviously, Hydro Flask <laughs> bottles, I think they're known for storing water and beverages, but they also make these food storage containers, the little screw top. And I love bringing those in my fanny pack when I go on bike rides and putting dried fruit or trail mix or something in there and having snacks on the trail. And it's kind of like a round edge container, so it doesn't have sharp edges that hurt when you ride your bike and when, they, when, when you're in their pack and stuff. And I just love bringing snacks everywhere I go with those. <laughs> That's awesome. So what's next for you and Sagebrush and um, yeah, what are you looking forward to? I know it's a unique circumstance right now, but as this all develops and unfolds, is there something that you're looking to, um, to dive into with the brand and, and yourself personally? 
Yeah. Right now I'm trying I'm trying not to focus too much on what's going to happen after this. Obviously I'm looking forward to traveling and things returning to normal and hugging friends, but I'm just trying to embrace what we're going through right now and make the most of it because this is our situation right now. And that's been just trying to stay busy and pick up new hobbies. I've been traveling so much the last few years that I haven't really been able to start a garden. And this is the first time I've been able to start vegetable, start a vegetable garden from seed. And that's honestly been one of my like life goals. <laughs> it sounds so simple and mundane. Cool to be able to grow some food. We've already been able to harvest some strawberries, blackberries, and get a couple things going. We have potatoes, spinach, kale, some melons, squash, zucchinis going off. Oh, zucchini's been the easiest thing to grow, I think. Some of it's been tough. We've had a couple things die on us, but that's been like the highlight of quarantine for me. Yeah. But other than that, just making masks, you know, cooking good food and trying to slow down a little bit, call friends and family whenever I can. Mm -hmm. Just appreciate what we still do have. I know you've been communicating and donating quite a few of your masks um, to people in need, um, as well as, you know, making them available for people to, to purchase. What have been some of the most inspiring moments for you of people reaching out maybe with stories of, of their own resilience to this and, and strength and getting through a hard situation? And um, I don't know, being on the front lines and donating so many masks to those people um have you had any people reach out to you that have had a story that's been impactful for you and kind of kept you at the sewing machine inspired to keep going and making more and more because i know you spend 10 hours eight hours in front of that thing and, uh... yeah it's been crazy seeing the demand for masks and i think my favorite thing about it has been there's so many people i really admire in this world whether it's er doctors or people who volunteer at homeless shelters or even lifeguards, and you don't always have a way to pay back those people who really help society move along. And this has been such a nice way to have like a small gift to say my thank you to all the people that serve our community, especially in the times we're in right now. And so I'm so thankful to have this opportunity to thank those people. Um, I've been able to donate masks to a lot of organizations but also just single masks to people who work at grocery stores or whose who's family like families of frontline workers and stuff like that and I've just gotten so many nice messages from those people saying I don't know I guess just touching on putting where your money where your mouth is kind of just like action rather than speaking kind of things that's awesome big shout out to everyone out there on the front lines um we really appreciate you guys and yeah, this has uh, been awesome, Anna. It's a beautiful day. The sun is shining back there. And, you know, for as we wrap this up, how can people follow along on your journey? How can they support you? How can they check out Sagebrush and, and follow along on what you got cooking? Yeah, Instagram's a big one for me. I always post photos from travels here and all my little adventures with my surf buddies and everything like that. So this is my Instagram. And then my eco-friendly surfboard bag company is, um, the handle is Sagebrush Bags. So I think those are two good ones. And I don't know, I'm always happy to write back to questions and in my messages or anything like that. And it's always fun seeing other small businesses and seeing up, checking out other people's travel stories. Awesome. Well, that's perfect. Well, it's been a lovely afternoon chat with you. <laughs> and uh, that's okay. Yeah. So, um, well, cool. Well, I will see you in about two seconds. And big shout out to Hydro Flask and everyone for tuning in today. In between adventures, this is a series where we check in with Hydro Flask ambassadors. Um, right now, Anna, Anna Ergot, she's a new Hydro Flask team member. And. Um, <laughs> Let me see. I think we got some really exciting guests coming up in the next week, uh, in the next weeks ahead. So tune in every Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll be here. Spoiler alert. There's some good ones coming up. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun. So thank you. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Anna. <laughs> see you soon. Bye, everyone.